Chapter 90 is Kalth invaded, and there's actually a nice little character beat for Honsu near the start of it. Uriel et al. find out that it's Honsu that's invading Kalth, and flashing back to Clay Kalgar, him and the first company are trekking through the mountains of Telasar, the planet he crashed into, whilst being attacked by demons. And that's not as exciting as it sounds. Oh, and remember the plot point from Chapter 2? It was a shared memory between Uriel and the newborn. Now, the Tech Magos reckons that he can bring more of this to the service and hopefully give Uriel the edge in the coming battle. The procedure, he says, has a 67.6349% of not killing Uriel. Mate, it's only page 190. There's nearly 300 more pages of this drivel to go. Killing Uriel now will be too much like an interesting plot twist. Yes, I know, I'm being very picky with that one. But I I think that's a testament to just how tedious I found this novel. The fact that in a better novel, I just glaze over that bit. Uh, The fact that I'm picking on it just goes to show how much I dislike this novel. Chapter 10, and to the backdrop of the Iron Warriors getting ready to lay siege to the underground cities of Kalth, Uriel has his 100% safe procedure, and as a result we find out about the life of a boy who was captured by Chaos, worked and abused almost to death, then stuffed into the womb of a demonic mother thing, and then morphed into the newborn, who is a space marine which uses Uriel's DNA as a base. Um, just read Dead Sky Black Sun if you can be bothered. It all does make sense, funnily enough. Now, to be fair, the flashback to the life of Samaquan, that's the name of the little boy, is actually quite well done, and it's very... it's nicely brutal. And credit to McNeil, that it was a very well-written part of the chapter. Then it's back to the second company of Espendor to see them do some more sensible things. Chapter 11, and Liarchus, having fulfilled his duty of removing any character conflict, is told to bugger off and harass the enemy. Now, I can only assume that he does this because we don't see him again. Ardaric Veins and the Newborn open up the gate to the underground cities and let Honsu and his army through. Uriel and the Swords of Bland rush to the rescue and capture Veins, and then the Newborn shoots Uriel in the head. Yes, he shoots Uriel in the head. I'll be honest, I punched the air and whooped. And then I realised I was reading an Ultramarines novel. Chapter 12 sees Player Kalgar and his mob reach a fortress that... Well, it may as well be called Helm's Deep. They find a load of civvies who went there when the demons invaded, and such a sensible move naturally irritates Captain Agamemnon of the First Company, because he's a prick. Then we follow some second company marines as they plod behind enemy lines to track down the leader of the invaders of Espendor. Oh, and um, in case you hadn't guessed, Uriel survived being shot in the head. I, I guess mass reactive bolter shells aren't what they used to be. He survived and got a top of the line artificial eye for his trouble, meaning he's even more awesome now. Oh, for the love of. Chapter 13 and Helm's Deep is attacked. But more interestingly, the second company dudes actually make a little progress. Oh, and there are a few pages at the end of this chapter that talk about uh, the other battles and such like they're going through the worlds of Ultramar, including a, an appearance from some dude called Tarius Tellian. He's a veteran scout sergeant. You know, I have absolutely no idea why I should care about this guy, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't die, simply because they bothered to name him. Chapter 14 and the battle for Kalth proper kicks off, but not before Uriel gets cautioned about even thinking of going all non-codex in the defence of Kalth. Now, we'll ignore that going non-codex in the past beat a Tyranid splinter fleet, whilst staying codex during this whole invasion has gotten large chunks of the Ultramarine space fleet, including player Kalgar's old jalopy, all blowed up. Chapter 15 is a big battle on Kalth. It was probably meant to be an exciting set piece, but it ain't. 
McNeil tries to give Uriel swords of boring some personality, but frankly, I don't care enough about them. And in all honesty, I've wanted the Ultramarines to lose from about chapter 5 onwards.